Hello and welcome to Scaria.com. My name is Dr. Heather Ali. With Scaria.com, you can enjoy medical lectures anywhere, anytime. Today, the topic I'm going to talk about is very common, but very important. How to manage a patient with abdominal pain. This part carries few of the topics of this whole management of abdominal pain. Few other relevant topics would be discussed in the subsequent lectures. So, what do we what will we study in this part? What to do first? It's a very important question. And it's a strange question. While working as an emergency physician, you need to realize that if a patient comes to an emergency department, you have to ask yourself some few basic questions that differentiates you as an emergency physician from other departments. You need to ask yourself, is this patient stable? If the patient is hemodynamically stable, if the blood pressure is normal, if the patient is getting adequate oxygen, adequate circulation, is the breathing normal? Because any of this thing that's compromised can make your patient worse. Even if you don't know the diagnosis, but if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, no matter what the diagnosis is, you need to treat, you need to be, you need to intervene as soon as possible. It's good to know the diagnosis, but if you start looking for a diagnosis without giving any initial treatment, you lose the patient and that's bad for the patient. So treat the patient first. So what to do first? A patient with abdominal pain, what to do first? Will be discussed in detail. Next, abdominal pain red flags. By red flags, I mean things that make you worry, things that make you alert, things that make you realize something big is going on inside and we need to stop before it makes things worse for this patient. Red flags. What are the diseases that might cause red flags or that are due to these red flags? What to do in the patient with red flags? Again, hemodynamic stability is very, very important. To proceed the patient for history and diagnosis, patient must be well-oriented, patient must be in the senses, GCS must be 15 by 15 before going for diagnosis. So make sure the patient is stable enough and he has gone through the red flags. The red flags are over, no red flags. The patient is stable, you can assess. Next, history. History, most of the, most of the history would be on pain. How this patient will present? What type of pain? And what type of pain should be considered high yield and should be acted quickly as, as possible? Pain with, re with regard to location in abdomen, with the structures underlying that region. Some differential diagnosis with slight associated symptoms. More differential diagnosis will be elaborated more in the next session. You can enjoy more lectures about emergency medicine at Ascaria.com. Once again, thank you for watching Ascaria.com. We'll see you soon.